Hey, senior engineer, come here for a sec. Congratulations, you are now an engineering manager. Uh, here's your team, and here is the product you need to build. I know you'll figure it out. Good luck. That was me. Sure, I could write code, but manage a team? Zero experience, no guidance, low confidence, and the vast majority of engineering managers start the exact same way. We can do better. It took me 10 years to build the skills and another 10 to build a successful tech company on top of that. But today, I'm gonna to give you a shortcut to catapult you forward. Those decades of experience distilled into about seven minutes of wisdom. If you're a little lost like I was, don't worry. Follow along and I'll take you from confusion to clarity and competency real quick. Let's go. We're gonna take this shortcut in three big steps. We'll call them why, how, and what. And the first step is to orient you in the right direction. Why are you in this role in the first place? To hire good developers and make them happy? To supervise a team? To improve dev velocity? To manage projects and budget? Yeah, I've heard all those, but they're short-sighted. Your role as an engineering manager and leader is to build the machine that builds the product. You're not building the product, you're building the machine that builds the product. This machine has three big parts, product, people, and process. You own them all, and it's your job to make it run well. To do that, you've got to tackle 11 responsibilities. First up, product responsibilities. You've got four with respect to technology. Deliver software, balance features and fixes, inspire engineers to build the product, inspire users to champion the product. Next up, people responsibilities. Three of them with respect to your team. Attract, retain, and grow talent. Structure and organize the team. Motivate and inspire the team. Finally, process responsibilities. You've got four of them with respect to getting things done. Deliver on time, deliver on budget, deliver with quality, keep all stakeholders well informed. This is why your engineering management role exists, to take on these challenges and build the machine that builds the product. Yes, I go deeper on these responsibilities in other videos, but this is a shortcut, no time for that now. Come on, next step is this way. The second step is to guide you on how to be, how to act, how to come across to the people around you. You probably know that most people who quit their job quit because of their manager like these iconic bosses. Would you want to work for them? Probably not. The era of the whip-cracking tyrant boss is long gone. Modern engineering managers should lead with compassion. Get to know the people on your team. Yes, their capabilities, but also their motivations, like money, family, love, power, and freedom, and their aspirations. Achieving a skill, acquiring wealth, starting a company, building a family, traveling the world. Put yourself in your team's shoes. What would you want to see from your boss? I'd want a kind, understanding, smart, thoughtful, clear, genuine, vulnerable, approachable, supportive human. So be that. Tall order? Sure, but I have faith in you. Now we talk specifics, the what you should do. I'm not going to tell you what tech stack to use or what dev process or hiring process to run. There are a million options that will work just fine, and your company probably has some of those puzzle pieces in place already. If they don't, I highly recommend the book Inspired by Marty Kagan. In my opinion, it captures the best way to build products. Also, a lot of my other videos capture the practices that I like to use. You can check those out and try them on precise. But I do have some fundamental practices that I'd advise every engineering manager to adopt. This is gonna be pretty rapid fire because we're about to land. So if you want more details, drop a comment. Here we go, the what you should do. Praise in public, criticize in private. When delivering critical feedback, be clear about exactly what you saw and what you expect instead. At the end, ask them to reiterate back to you what they heard. Also, when delivering feedback, use personal feeling statements to express concerns without triggering a defensive reaction. Trust by default and assume good intent. Lead with a light touch. Operate like an approachable peer until a decision needs to be made. Then step forward and make the call. Leading is just showing the way. Pull your team for their ideas. Ask them regularly what they think we should do. Listen and consider their ideas. When making a decision, communicate why you made that decision. If you don't, the team will make up a story for you. They'll make assumptions. Save yourself from having to do damage control by clearly communicating your thought process. Hold frequent, meaningful one-on-ones with the people on your team. I like every two weeks for 45 minutes. Don't use them as status checks. Ask them what's on their mind, professional or personal, and go from there. For a great read that touches on one-on-ones, check out The Trillion Dollar Coach. Establish principles on your team. These are explicitly stated shared beliefs that guide your team's actions. Some of my team's principles were faster is better, simpler is better, quality is not someone else's job, and we are vocal, helpful, dependable, and kind. 
You don't need to adopt the same principles, but you do need some to establish common ground for how your team will operate. Don't tell people what to think, tell them what to think about. Give them challenges to solve, give them lots of creative latitude, and expect them to rise to the occasion. For more on this, read the book, Multipliers. Remember, you're building the machine that builds the product. A manager operates this machine, and a leader evolves it, makes it better. Managers push the buttons, operating the processes that already exist, like the dev process, the hiring process, the review process. A leader looks for things that aren't working, looks for broken pieces, and tweaks it to make the machine run even smoother. How do you look for broken pieces? Revisit your 11 responsibilities every week. Identify your top pain point and focus on that in the week to come. This is one way to consistently lead. Oh, looks like we made it. But there is a next step. It is for you to take a loan because it's one thing to learn something and it's another to live it. Now, when one of your interns comes up to you and says, hey, I see you're real busy and you're in a lot of meetings, but like, what do you actually do here? You can confidently say that you build the machine that builds the product and share your 11 responsibilities. If you need support with more specifics, like in this video about how to work backwards, I'll be here to help. Good luck.